Jack. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Good luck, Sai. Right How about Ho Ho Hogan for Christmas? Yeah. Hey, that is great. I mean, that is fantastic. It's Santa Claus with a headbutt. Exactly. Well, it's, it started this weekend, you know, so I'm kind of uh, nervous about how it did. Um, they opened it in about uh, 10 markets, selected markets, where my, my movies have done pretty good before. Yeah. And uh, well, a lot of TV. <laughs> and so I got my fingers crossed because Arnold Schwarzenegger has his movie coming out in two weeks. And um, we're going to find out who the better Santa is. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Ho, 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 ho. Uh, th th how did this all come about, the, the, the Santa with muscles? Well, every year in uh, California or Florida, depending on where we end up, my wife's family is from there, I do the Santa Claus thing. And so about five years ago, I had all the kids, you know, and everything was going real good. And one kid sat on my lap and he goes, hey, Santa's got Reeboks on. And I kind of froze <laughs> a little bit, you know. And all of a sudden he goes, wait a minute, Santa's got muscles. And I started to sweat and I got out of there alive. The kids didn't figure it out. <laughs> But uh, I called my friend up. I said, God, I got a great idea, Santa with muscles. And so the idea started there, and we sat on it for about five or six years. And uh, finally, somebody decided to make it. When did you have time to film it? I have seen you wrestling. I've seen you doing promotions everywhere. I've run into you a couple of times just relaxing. And when yeah. did you ever get a chance to do the movie? Well, we filmed it right in the middle of summer. Yeah. Full Santa suit, Ooh. stomach, you know, the whole deal. Hair on my head, which I'm not used to. <laughs> and uh, it was hot, man. It was hot out in the middle of the San Fernando Valley. And my wife and kids were out there, so, you know, I could deal with it. Oh, that's unbelievable. W what is the plot? I mean, obviously, we saw you with Santa then beating up the thugs, but yeah. I haven't had a chance to see the full movie yet. What's it all well, about? Well, it's got a, a pretty cool story on it, too. It's this guy, Blake Turichki. He's the richest man in the world, like a Donald Trump or some really, really rich guy that has an empire, you know, but this is built around health food pr products, excuse me, and cereals and all that stuff. And Blake is playing with his real rich fr friends, paint guns. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he has a run-in with the local law officials. Instead of stopping, he decides to run. He's having so much fun, I'll run from the cops. He runs into a mall, and he tries to hide, and he puts a Santa suit on. Next thing happens, he slips on a banana peel, and when he wakes up, oh, Santa? Ooh. He forgets who he is. Like and so, yeah. Man. It's really neat, because then he starts treating people the way you should be treated, and it's a full circle deal. He's good to people, so good things come back to him and he meets all these kids, and it's a cool movie. You know, I know you're going to be wrestling tonight, but they're yeah. billing it as Hollywood Hulk Hogan, which is something we haven't seen a lot of prior to that. Uh, Hollywood, oh, here we go. I'm going Hollywood right before your very eyes. The transformation is made. Well, you know something, Jack Harris? It goes like this, man. <laughs> Hollywood Hogan is the bad guy. Oh, I mean, yeah. I'm the baddest of all. You know, the kids know about the train and the prayers, the vitamins. They all know that works. Yeah. They all know the Hulkster's cool. But when it comes to getting in the ring, I get tired of politics. Yeah. Wow. See, I am a bad guy. <laughs> I get tired of politics. And when Hollywood Hogan gets in the ring, I started making the first move now. Instead of waiting for a good, li good guy like Jack Harris to cheap shot me, oh, yeah. or macho man Randy Savage, who I just got done beating up, I take the first shot now. That is no more politics. We're gonna, we want to talk more about the wrestling and the movies when we come back. In fact, we're going to see another famous clip of the one and only Hulk Hogan coming up here. No, no, no. The variety of damage. Oh, the wrestling champion of the world is now entering the arena. And I'm telling you, he is quite a sight. All decked out in red. Why are they carrying him? Walking. Come on, it's a charity. You're wearing your anatomy out for charity. Right. Nobody else does this much for charity. Bob Hope would. That's true. Oh, the bad guy in Rocky III. Wow. And he was, uh, he was just saying that it goes back to 1978 which is a couple of years ago. <laughs> when I had hair. Yeah, I was, I, was wait, I was waiting for the clip to keep going, so when I took the, the big uh, carnival hat off, there was a full head of hair as much as yours back then. Ah. But anyway, it's gone. Yeah, who needs hair, you know? The, uh, the, how did you get into that movie? Is, is that what catapulted you movie-wise? It, it was great for my career, wrestling. Because when I did that movie, um, Stallone was looking for a wrestler to play Thunderlips, boxer versus wrestler, like if you know, a wrestler from the Olympics got a hold of Mike Tyson. As soon yeah. as a wrestler would go to... I mean, as soon as Tyson would go to punch a wrestler, somebody would take him down and twist him up or whatever. So 
Rocky wanted that, I mean Stallone. So he saw Madison Square Garden. I had two guys in a bear hug. <laughs> and I was ragdolling my film down. He goes, that's the guy. So they called me. I got the message for the Rocky movie in the dressing room. I went, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, about two weeks later, you know, I got a, a Western Union letter that said, Mr. Stallone would like to talk to you, and it happened that way. And it was the real thing. How long did it take to, to film something like that? Well, it took about 10 days for that, I guess it's about a two and a half minute scene. Yeah. But at uh, that time, I, I had just seen the first two Rocky movies, and Stallone was like 80 feet tall in the American <laughs> public size. So when I got I said, wow, you know, this is great to do a movie with him. And then when they let us stand together, you know, and I was a lot taller, they said, man, wrestlers are really that big, so everybody got interested, and that was kind of like the start of the big springboard for Hulk Hogan. That was terrific. And I love the line. He says, why are they carrying him? He's walking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my heavens. What about in the future? Do you want to do more movies or more wrestling or a little combination of both? Well, I tell you, it's all hinging on, you know, what happens the next year. I've got Sam with Muscles out, like we all know, but I've also got a couple other movies that uh, I'm just waiting to strategically put out. I've got uh, Secret Agent Club, where I play a... Uh, James Bond by night and during the day, bald head, no mustache, briefcase, tape between my glasses, yep, yep, I'm the nerdy father, and my kids saved me, and I just finished a, a Three Ninja movie, and uh, Lonnie Anderson and uh, Jim Varney, Ernest, they play the bad guy, so I'm still rolling. And well, your kids, speaking of kids, your kids were in the movie Santa with Muscles, right? Yeah, there's a, uh, a spot where Santa is taking orders for Christmas, and I just got knocked out, and I really don't know what's going on, and why is this kid sitting here? And, there's one time when there are two children on my lap. That's the only time those are my kids, so, you know, it's fun. It's a good way for them to break into the biz, you know? Well, I get to keep them with me all day, you know? Yeah, you know, that's... Uh, you gotta stay here. <laughs> but it, it was fun. fun. Going again to the, the bad guy thing and wrestling, should we take a break? Maybe we better take a break and bring up the subject of wrestling again. We'll be right back with the Hulk for all you Hulkamaniacs. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Out there, from the flesh, baby. Not only does he do movies with, of course, Santa with muscles, which you're going to get a chance to see very soon, and of course, wrestling, which you're going to get a chance to see tonight. It's going to be wrestling tonight, but infomercials, which may be the toughest thing of all. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We, we have some tape, by the way. Our guys uh -oh. were over while you were filming an infomercial at your house, and you can see what all is involved in this, how complicated something like that can be. Oh, still tired. <laughs> this is the product. That's it. Hulk Hogan's Health Club in a Bag. The Health Club in a Bag. I like yeah. that. And here they are prepping you. You know, people aren't aware that, that infomercials are this complicated. Yeah, they were uh, long days, 5.30 in the morning till about 11 at night, and uh, did the same thing yesterday. So you spent two whole days just doing the infomercial. Yeah, and which we're not done yet. You got a new house over there. I saw you on Regis and Kathy Lee, I think it was last week. They were talking about your new house, which, of course, we've been following along in the newspapers around here for a long time now. But Let me, let me put these on to answer that question. Okay, what are we talking about, the new house now? <laughs> <laughs> no, the new house is great. My wife... Uh, Spent three years building this house, and the whole time I was watching her up, I was going, hmm, what are they doing here? You know, from the <laughs> very beginning, but now that she's finished with it, I understand. And it's a really great house, and when the kids play hide and seek, you don't find them. <laughs> you can't find them. But uh, yeah, we, we filmed the infomercial over there, and it's different. You know, they really work long and hard hours, and all day uh, Saturday from 5.30 in the morning till 11 at night, and then yesterday, the same deal. We were trying to get it done. We still have a few things left, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see how. Hulk Hogan's Health Club goes. We were out here with some serious Hulkophiles talking about the history of Hulk Hogan. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, the people who live around this area know that you are from right here in the Tampa Bay area. And then it came back to where? And it's Robinson High School and South Tampa. There it is. And, but the whole thing is, I mean, you weren't a wrestler in high school, were you? No, I wasn't, but uh, I was very active in sports and you know, getting in shape and working out and stuff like that. But Tampa, Florida has always been the hotbed for professional wrestling, as you know. Oh, yes. And guys like Eddie Graham, Jack, and Jerry Briscoe, and just everybody that was anybody in wrestling, I saw them come through Tampa. So my dream was always to get in there and give it a shot. So, so you always sort of wanted to do something. Yeah, like I trained for a lot of years to uh, get physically in shape. And uh, they had a gentleman here in, in Tampa who's still here, and he's a great guy, Hiro Matsuda, yeah. who basically takes you down and teaches you how to wrestle. And uh, you got to want it pretty bad to... Uh, survive here on Matsuda. So he taught you, and then what, what kind of guy were you in high school? 
Um, normal, I guess. You know, <laughs> <laughs> pretty normal. Not that you're abnormal now, of course. <laughs> no, 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 no. Pretty normal. But uh, my whole thing was like we had the shop class, you know, and everybody would talk about wrestling, and we'd talk about it in the morning, and the afternoon. So I was hooked on it, and uh, I just kept following the wrestling on TV until finally I gave it a shot with Hero Matsuda. How much time do you have to spend now working out to remain in the incredible condition that you're in? Well, working out's my job. It's kind of like um, punching the time clock for me. And, and with wrestling and everything else going on, I'm trying to keep up with the young guys, you know. And uh, a lot of guys are getting in the wrestling business that are younger, but they can't find a, wait a minute, they can't find a new Hulk Hogan brother. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I'm in as good a shape as the young guys are, you know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. So I'm going to uh, keep on doing it because it's still a lot of fun for me. What, what is it like to eat with you? I mean, do you eat a lot of food? Do you, I mean, if you go to a McDonald's, do you get like... <laughs> Three or four Big Macs, or do you, do you go toward uh, carbs or Well, I go on binges. I try to because, you know, when you get a little older and more mature and really in shape like us. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you like know, us mature you can't, guys. You can't, you can't sit down and drink a gallon of milk and eat a bunch of cookies, which, which I do every once in a while, you know. Yeah. But then most of the time I'm pretty consistent, and that's what it's all about is exercising, being very consistent, you know, yeah. and just being real aware that, you know, you don't bloat yourself up. You can, when you're, you eat too much, you know you're uncomfortable. Stop. Oh, yeah, just yeah. stop, you know. And being real consistent in diet and exercise and eating the right foods, you know, will kind of like get your metabolism burning fat and just stay healthy. I wouldn't want to have to buy him food. <laughs> it's not that bad. I'm not going to ask you out to a restaurant anytime soon. We'll be back in a moment with Hulk Hogan. <laughs> well, the World Championship Wrestling will be taking place tonight at the Bayfront Center at 7.30. And to call and arrange for tickets, if there are any available, call 287-8844, 287-8844. This is quite a match. Uh, you got Lex Luger, who's one of your old buddies. I mean, and Hollywood Hulk Hogan going on. Well, you know, gentlemen, Jack, the way things go tonight, brother, first thing you got wrong is it's not the WCW anymore. Right. It's the NWO, the New World Order. You see, I got tired, like I told you before, of playing politics with little teeny guys like Ted Turner. Ah, you know what I'm saying? Yes, indeed. I got tired of waiting in line for a World Heavyweight title shot because I am the greatest wrestler of all time. So the bottom line is this. I started my own deal. I took the WCW belt, I spray painted NWO, brother, and it's like cutting edge 90s good guy. Even though I'm a bad guy and I beat everybody up, the kids cheer me. The kids are smarter than the adults, brother. They know that Hulkster's cool, man, with the training pairs and vitamins. But when I get in the ring, man, I take care of business. Lexi Flexi's history. Let's hear it. You better be in my corner, brother. I'll be there. <laughs> 